very good evening. You're watching the News X debate at 9 with me, Frank Pereira. Well, the Samajwadi Party Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav has started chanting the Third Front mantra once again. But will the Third Front take off? Will it have any takers? That's what we're going to be discussing over the next half an hour or so with an elite panel right here on News X. But first, let's take a look at what Mulayam had to say. पूरे देश में स्थिति बन गई मेरी जुनी सरकार सुबह में भी रहेगी और दिल्ली भी रहेगी अभी दस साल तक को भी नहीं लगती है कि एक दल की सरकार दिल्ली में किसी की पर है मेरी जुनी सरकार का जमाना आ गया है इसे अपनी अपनी ताल बढ़ा करके विचारों के आधार पर पहले ही चुनाव पहले मेल के और मेल के लड़ते हो तो विचारधारा पहले ही कार्यक्रम पहले ही बना दो और कैंडिडेट मॉक Hinting at Mulayam Singh Yadav's interest in a third front, sending shivers down the spine of UPA managers. With its 22 MPs, Samajwadi Party gives outside support to the Congress-led UPA. The numbers game is all the more crucial after DMK's abrupt pull-off from the government. But if you look at the history of the past 20 years, the history of coalition politics in India, the reality is that a third front or a fourth front or a fifth front has been the most enduring mirage of Indian politics. Remember, Yadav served as Defence Minister in the United Front Coalition Government in 1996 and the Left Front, allies in the 1996 experiment, not seeming averse to a second inning. If I remind you, you see, even in the days of VP Singh or when uh, Devagoda was the Prime Minister, such coalition came into existence after the election, but not before. So it's possible even now. India allows no rest rattled after Mulam's third front bid. Before every general election, there is an attempt, or at least a talk about third front, which never materializes. It's also one such a, uh, I suppose, time for people to talk about third front, which is like a holy grail. People ch keep chasing it, but it, it never gets formed. So it's okay. This is certainly not the first hint from the SP Supremo about going against the UP. Not only did Mulam Shah praises on BJP leader LK Advani a few days ago, he recently met Shah Pawar, whose NCP is a part of the government. Also, Sonia Gandhi had to virtually plead with the belligerent Mulayam to give up on his demand for Union Minister Beni Prasad Varma's resignation. Is it now SP's turn to pull the plug on the UPA government? Bureau Report, NewsX. And joining me on the debate tonight, President of the Janta Party, Dr. Subramanian Swami, right here in our news desk studios. Ajit Jogi, former Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh, Senior Congress Leader, joining us on the show tonight. Jagdish Shettigar, Senior Leader of the BJP, and uh, also Shivraj Singh, National Secretary of the JDU, as well as T.R. Ramachandran, Political Analyst, uh, and uh, Professor Madhav Nalapat, Managing Editor of the Sunday Guardian, also joining us on the show tonight. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being a part of the news X debate at 9. Well, Dr. Swami, I'd like to start with you. Of yeah. course, uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav seems to be toying with the idea of the third front yet again. How viable is the third front really going to be? Well, third front uh, viability would depend on whether there is a polarization uh, of uh, Hindu-Muslim uh, voters. Hmm. Uh, I think, uh, for example, if uh, Modi were to be a candidate, uh, there would be a great consolidation of the Hindu vote hmm. and that would have an impact on the Muslim vote would probably then uh, go to Congress. That would mean that the third front will evaporate. Hmm. But if uh, the, there is uh, no sharp uh, focusing uh, personalities in the fray as leaders, then I think there is a large scope for the third front. Okay. Tia Ramachandran. At a time like this, at an uncertain time when you don't know what's going to happen in 2014, regional parties seem to be coming to the fore. Is it wrong for someone like a Mulayam Singh Yadav to have prime ministerial aspirations? No, I don't think there's anything wrong in any leader having political aspirations. But the fact is, can he really get there? At this point of time, it is posturing and pressurizing the Congress as far as Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav is concerned. And it's very surprising that he should raise and really talk about a proposed third front 
in Maharashtra in NCP's backyard. Mm. So it does assume significance that there is some kind of a uh, of an agreement or talk between the Mr. Sharad Pawar on the one side and Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav on the other. You know, some years ago there was an attempt by Mr. Chandrababu Naidu to form what he then called, you know, get all the regional parties together and call it a united progressive alliance. It didn't really work out because ultimately the numbers after adding AGP and all the other regional parties including one of the two Dravidian parties added up to nothing more than 149 mm. and even now I think if they try their best I don't think they will be anywhere near the 150 mark so where are they going to get the rest that oh. is the big question no, no, so they, they can excuse me they can get the Congress then <laughs> Congress is already <laughs> BJP we, out we had a similar situation <laughs> yeah, yeah, in they were gonna, yes. No, no Mr. Chandrasekhar also. Chandrasekhar uh, was for the uh, minority government. No, Chandrasekhar was not because of Congress. Uh, uh, shall I say they had no alternative? Because Chandrasekhar was government was uh, actually Rajiv Gandhi and myself worked it out uh, to bring down the BPC government and bring in a replacement. But I'm saying that the if the th uh, third front gets 150 um, uh, MPs, then the Congress, uh, supposing it has 120 or something. I will be forced to support the third front to form the government. Ah, but the point is even the outer limit some years ago when the United Progressive Alliance was formed, it did not exceed 142 to 145. So where are they going to get so, so many seats? That's the real question, so isn't it, Shivraj Singh? Will, 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 will you get the numbers? Problem. There is another problem in this whole idea. There is no problem in trying with that, this idea, but the feasibility looks difficult. First thing is that who will be the first among the equals to lead this alliance? All these leaders, regional leaders, are cherishing the idea of uh, a third front on the possibility that they will be the first among the equals. But the actual problem will come up when this another big party has to support. If if Mulayam Singh is cherishing the idea, he's it's, it's fine if till he is prime minister. But will he support any other person as prime ministerial candidate? That is a di distant possibility, I think. And here comes the problem. Second thing is that ideological commonality is lacking there is no ideological commonality the third problem is that today the country is facing corruption as one of the biggest and and it's the most uh, uh, scaring problem for the country but when it comes to fighting this uh, Congress government then these people who are ready as replacement they are more corrupt than uh, or or, act, uh, uh, or uh, at least equally corrupt as the present government. Mm. So I don't think they are going to get enough numbers. One, there will be no uh, uh, commonality and there will be no agreement uh, among uh, for the first among the equals. So and there is no possibility of a third front. There is no VP Singh here who was first among the equals. There will be there will be nobody to support anybody else. There will be nobody to support anybody else, but Not these are all. worrying times as far as the Congress is concerned. Ajit Jogi, of course, uh, uh, Mulayam Singh first, first and foremost went ahead and, and said that LK Adwani, he went, and went ahead and praised LK Adwani. Then today, of course, he goes ahead and says that uh, there's no, not going to be a government without a coalition and says that uh, the third front is going to come to power in the next elections. These are troubled times for you, aren't they? Because you're just hanging on a very thin line of the support of both the Samajwadi Party and the Bahujan Samaj Party. And now you have the Samajwadi Party uh, president, of course, throwing his own tantrums. These are really troubled times for you. Uh, not at all, not at all. I, we are talking about uh, the third front and the possibility of third front. There are three, four reasons. Uh, one, the country has experienced third front in the past also. And it, it, it was a total failure. It didn't last. It, it couldn't do anything for the country. They were fighting among themselves and doing nothing for the nation. So, so, so the voter knows, the nation knows that Third Front is not a government that will ever work. Number two, as we have already mentioned, after all there has to be a leader to lead the Third Front. Uh, if you look at the claimants, there are at least a dozen claimants uh, who, who, who would like to lead the Third Front. In, in, in that scenario, uh, third front would never materialize.
The third front is nothing really, for the country uh, is what uh, you had to say, Mr. Jogi. But my question to you is, is the same uh, Congress no, that no, supported no, the, the third really front really in 1996? The voter, the, the voter in India is, has, all, is, has always voted very intelligently. He, he may not be literate, he, he may not be educated, but when it comes to forming a government, uh, the voting pattern has always been uh, in favor of the nation. Whether it was uh, after emergency, Indraji's government was thrown out, and in two, three years uh, after that, it was again brought back. So the, the voter understands what the nation needs, and the voter understands that at this point of time, when we are passing through very difficult times, uh, you need a national party, a national party with uh, uh, credentials, with experience to lead the nation and that is why I strongly feel that uh, this uh, talk of third front with due respect to Mulan Singh Ji and to others who are talking of third front would never materialize. Okay, you are saying the third front would not materialize, but Mr. Shetigar, the, the Congress and the BJP certainly seem to be lo losing hold. Regional parties, regional politics seems to be the core right now. You look at Karnataka, of course there is a JDS. You look at Tamil Nadu, it's AIDMK and, and the DMK. You look at uh, Andhra Pradesh now, you have parties like the YSR Congress and you have parties like the TRS that are coming to the fore. So clearly the national players seem to be losing ground. No, first of all, the, the statements made by Mulayam Singh of late and in the, at the different occasions. It should be seen in a different direct context because all these days the both SP and the BSP are getting blackmailed by Congress. I would not like to go into details. Hmm. Now after the withdrawal of support by DMK, I think he has decided to be assertive and now it is the turn of the SP and the BSP to blackmail the Congress. Now coming to the viability of the third front, we have seen all this theory. Third front cannot come to the power without the outside support of the one of the major parties, either Congress or the BJP. Hmm. And you cannot expect the major parties to give support to the com complete their term. So the third front will not be a stable arrangement, we have already experienced. Now if the third front comes, and I will say that it is uh, uh, unfortunate for the country in terms of the economy or in terms of what you call the governance as a whole. And about the possibility of the third front, of course it is a challenge to BJP also because under the given situation, no doubt that anti incumbents factor is very strong on account of the various of the factors like the national security or the scam after scam. There are so many scams. But who will be the beneficiary? Now, naturally, the, being a major party, the opposition party, it is for us to decide our strategy. It is a challenge for us also how to uh, utilize the opportunity. Of course, I cannot go into the details, but we have to strategize how to encourage the the opportunity coming in that way. And how do these parties, the national parties, and cash these opportunities, uh, uh, Dr. Swami? Well, they got to first identify uh, what's going to be the issue. Hmm. Uh, generally speaking, we have had elections with a single issue. And this time, I think uh, corruption definitely, is, as is pointed out, uh, is an issue. Hmm. No doubt about that. And the uh, question would be who will be the best to articulate it, who cannot be themselves accused of corruption. That's going to be a factor. Secondly, there is uh, a great deal of unrest after all these terrorist attacks and so on that we are not reacting strongly. So mm. there's a need for some nationalistic uh, pitching, you see. Now, who's going to do that? Uh, of course, uh, in my opinion, uh, BJP and the NDA parties are uh, ideally situated to do it. Hmm. But whether they will focus it that way or not, I can't say. That's the thing. The second is that there are a number of parties which will not go with Congress because uh, I think the DMK, for example, left not because of Lanka issue. Hmm. That was just the excuse. Hmm. They thought that Congress is done for. It's, a, it's not got a future. And uh, that's what the DMK people who talk to me uh, say so. And therefore, there are parties like DMK, then there's 
Mr. Mulayam Singh has got ambitions, he wants to go alone, so does Mayavati. Yeah, uh, then as you say, pointed out, the uh, Andhra parties, there are so many parties which will say, we will not go with Congress, then who will they go with? And that's where the third front possibility arises. So that's where the third front pot pos possibility arises. But uh, uh, Mr. Jogi, I'd like to bring up an interesting aspect that Dr. Swami brought up, of course. He said that, you know, everybody wants to abandon the Congress ship right now because everybody believes that the ship is sinking. Uh, how are you going to keep your flock together? Let them be happy in this feeling, which is not a correct feeling. We, we, we would be getting allies. We already have allies. You have already seen, I don't want to name, but if we, we have already seen JDU uh, um, uh, posturing uh, to lead the NDA. And if Mr. Narendra Modi is projected as the future Prime Minister, uh, everybody knows that Nitish Kumarji will not be with them. You have already seen the uh, recent gestures made by uh, Mamta Banerjee. You are you, 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 talking about DMK. DMK has issued a statement recently, uh, a few a few hours back, that we, we, we are not in the toppling game. We don't want to destabilize UPA. And, and we, they have thanked us for the projects we sanctioned for Tamil Nadu. So, this way, if um, BJP projects Mr. Narendra Naren Modi, whether they do it officially or not, the, the country now feels that Mr. Narendra Modi would be their prime ministerial candidate. And that be so, none of these secular parties is going to support that Mr. Jogi, I want to tell you one thing here. I want to. Alan. Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Yeah. Singh, go ahead. You have, point, you have pointed out one very interesting fact of secularism. I would uh, like to tell you that JDU is, uh, is, is on the verge of uh, going out from NDA. But secularism will not be the reason. Because let me tell you that uh, Mr. Nitish Kumar and Mr. Sharad Yadav, the biggest leaders of the party, were there with NDA when Gujarat riots were taking place. Now they are raising the issue of Gujarat riots when Gujarat is completely in peace and progress. So secularism is not the re reason. It is only and only the political uh, selfishness which is the reason for breaking or making an alliance. And if secularism was the reason, then tell me one party which has not uh, been in an alliance partner of BJP. And recently, Mr. Uh, uh, the last time when Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav was... You are wanting to name one Congress has never gone with BJP and will never go with... No, 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 I am not talking about... Not, I am not talking about Congress party, sir. The regional parties I am talking about, tell me which is the party which has not done business with uh, BJP. Then BJP was not secular and now... BJ, uh, then BJP was secular and today BJP is not secular. So all this secular positioning is seasonal secularism. It is actually nothing else. And this secularism business is only to loot the country and nothing else. Pavan Nalapath, I'd like to bring experience you in. Experience has taught them. Experience has taught them that if they don't go with the uh, Congress, the, the minorities of the country are not going to support them. And minorities would ultimately decide as to who gets the maximum number of seats. But this is very strange that only minorities will get, decide who will be in majority. This is very strange. I fa fail to understand your logic. Can you explain that how can the that minority the of a country... That's the logic of our Indian democracy. That's the logic of our Indian democracy. Okay, then the you majority be... votes get divided, whereas the minority votes are only looking at the BJP. We have to defeat the BJP. That is their sole motive. And okay, if, fine. if they yes. find that this is the party that is going to defeat the BJP, they'll go and block and vote for that party. No, you forget it. That is not the scenario. At least about Bihar, I can tell you, that be it any case, whether it is minority polarization or anything, Congress is not going to gain anything in Bihar, whosoever they uh, go in alliance with. So, uh, this time you might be getting a new lesson of democracy, I think. Okay, you'll be getting a new lesson of democracy with due as respect to you, I think the people of this country will, giving, will be throwing a new lesson. Uh, to be uh, taught to the leaders of this country. Uh, that's the message, of course, from Mr. Singh. I'm sure the Congress will not agree with that. Let's bring in Professor Madhav Nalapat also into the picture right now. Professor has been listening intently to all that's been happening. Uh, Professor, your views on, on a possible third front and the possibility of uh, what's going to happen in the near future? 
you know, I'm very surprised when people talk about a third front being so entirely different from what we are facing now. It needs to remember that after P.V. Narasimha Rao's government, and Narasimha Rao was in a minority for quite a while, while uh, during his time, we have, we have had only coalition governments. So, in a sense, there have been coalitions all through. This is not a Congress government, although of course it's been run as though it's a Congress government. The NDA was definitely not a BJP government and it was not even run as a BJP government. The second point I'd like to make is that if you look at the rates of economic growth and you look at the stability of governments, I have found the stronger the government, the lower the rate of economic growth. Look at UPA 1 and UPA 2. UPA 1 was much less stable than UPA 2 but economic growth has completely plummeted during UPA 2 despite the fact that uh, the Congress party got very many more seats in 2009 than it ever got in 2004. The reality today in India is that the national level parties frankly and especially if I may say so the ruling party of the center has failed so signally that the only hope now is in some of the states and that is why state leaders are coming up and it's perfectly natural. You have seen this in the United States where governors of states, for example Bill Clinton uh, or, is one example, where governors of states come up and they uh, get promoted to national politics. So because the, some of the states are doing so much better than the center, there is obviously an attention paid to state leaders. So I am not a prophet of doom when it comes to a third front. A third front may function far more effectively than a, uh, than a, a one party dominated situation. Stronger the government, weaker the economic growth. Do you agree with that, uh, Dr. Swami? Well, I think uh, in a sense uh, what uh, Professor Nalapat says is that the moment government gets out of economic policy, hmm. uh, the country does well. Of course, that's a ideologically uh, distinct position hmm. where small governments lead to better economic growth. Uh, this is the, what the Reagan uh, used to say. Yeah. Uh, I think in the uh, it would be uh, uh, difficult to classify what is a strong government. I think the when we had a one-party government, we also had the Soviet economic model, which was mm. a disaster everywhere, including in the Soviet Union. Yes. Uh, so what has changed is uh, the economic model change, the economic uh, approach change. We shifted from uh, command economy to market economy, and that therefore this is a kind of a nonsense correlation. Uh, if the number of shoes produced in the country and the uh, rate of suicide, uh, you know, is positively correlated, well, that's because both are uh, uh, related to the growing population. Hmm. Uh, so uh, the, here, it just happens to be so that uh, the time the economic uh, reforms came in, we had started having a series of coalition governments. So um, uh, broadly agreeing that the smaller the government, the better. Hmm. Uh, and the um, uh, weaker the government, it means a small government naturally. Mm. But uh, uh, I think what is important for economic growth is the model that you pursue. Uh, certainly, that is very important, the model that you pursue. But uh, Mr. Ramachandra, what I'd like to ask you is how much of an impact or how much of uh, 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 an impact exactly is inflation going to have in 2014? I think it's going to have a phenomenal impact. You cannot wish it away at all. I mean, the whole Alabalu now and people really suffering has been constantly at the top. Hmm. You know, it's pr the price spiral which the government has been unable to control, the issue of corruption and the hardship that has been growing by the day for the poor people in this country. How can these issues be wished away? I mean, it's a fact of life. Every day people are suffering. And therefore, I think the Congress is on the back foot right now. You know, they are hoping that a miracle will will will, will happen whereby they hope to you know at least get a hundred seats and what is this miracle this miracle is basically that if their schemes materialize by then including the deposits and banks to the poor or the poor then they think you know it, it something will happen cut, cut. otherwise cut, it's cut. going to be very difficult Mr. Jogi, of course, corruption and inflation are two major uh, points that, that, you, that the Congress is suffering from right now. How are you going to tackle these two problems, corruption and, of course, inflation? I entirely agree with the panelists that these two issues are the most important issues. But 
We, we have the state governments. You look at the state government in Chhattisgarh or in Madhya Pradesh or in Gujarat. Uh, that the, 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 the uh, kind of corruption that prevails there. They are selling away everything. The minerals, water, uh, trees, forests, hills, everything is being sold away. And, and uh, the kind of uh, corruption they are indulging in is, is unparalleled, unprecedented. So, so when corruption, we talk, it, talk as, a, as an issue uh, about corruption, there are state governments where corruption is there and is, is far, far greater than what it can be seen at the central level and it, it affects the common man much more than the corruption at any other yeah, level. So, so if corruption is an issue, yeah, we will talk about it. We will talk about their state governments yeah. and the corruption in their state governments. If inflation is an issue, why why are the BJP-led state governments not conducting raids on black marketers, on holders? Well, what are the steps they are taking to uh, curb in, inflation? And that the biggest question the would be the, biggest of the global situation, the economic situation, uh, the, the kind of GDP growth rate we have it would be about fourth or fifth in the world. Uh, in countries, even like uh, powerful countries like America, Europe, they are suffering. So all, all these facts are there, you, you can't wish it away. But what you are saying, Mr. Zogri, is quite contrary to the perception. We will face these issues very boldly. We will talk about corruption, we will talk about inflation. But you can talk about... And we say that we have done our best. Tell us what else... What have you done about bringing the black money back from the foreign banks? You have utterly failed on that account after giving the assurance to the people of the country. You have failed. The government, the, the, uh, the, the foreign banks and uh, some of the governments are ready to share the informations and the Congress party is uh, not ready to do, uh, not ready to share the information. They are, they, are, uh, 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 they are hiding behind some rules or the other. Why don't you share the information? No, no, Mr. That Swan is there, he, here on the panel. We, we he is, are, have he is the biggest respect. crusader for that it's case. Very yeah, he is. He most definitely uh, is the biggest crusader. Yeah. Task, but but we 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 are moving ahead and we, we are doing our best. No other government would have done better in in bringing the black. You are, you are not even ready to the investigate country. the cases which are pending and this uh, 2G scam and all these scams were being investigated only when we were you were pushed to the wall by people like Mr. Swami. <laughs> You are not ready to investigate. Even now you are not ready to investigate. We, we are, we, ours is the only government which has put our own MPs in jail, our own ministers in jail. We, we <laughs> we are we are only the poor Dalit ministers you are putting behind the bars, not the powerful ones. <laughs> you are putting only the Dalit ministers behind the bars, not the powerful ones. <laughs> the actual culprit, culprits are roaming uh, on, I mean not roaming on the streets, but rather they are ruling the government. Only you are sending the Dalits behind the Wherever bars. Wherever it is proved, we have removed our CM, Mr. Ashok Chahan. We, we removed our ministers. We have taken action against our ministers. We have put them behind bars. Mr. Mr. Uh, Swami, tell me any other government which has done so. Scam. There are so many, so many non-Congress governments. Are they doing it? With the people who are indulging in corruption in the I have state. read in the I have read in the national newspapers today only that uh, Mr. Raja is saying that I am not only the culprit. Why don't you catch the real culprits? Well, that will have to be proved. Just because one person says, you can't take action on that. He is not, 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 he is the minister concerned and he said that equal responsibility has to be shared by uh, no. with the prime minister and he is also, I have also read the name of Mr. Uh, Pranav Mukherjee in that, he said that I have taken the prime minister and Mr. Pranav Mukherjee while taking that decision. Because he is head of the government. I have read into the national but newspapers. all these will have to be investigated and inquired into and, and everybody knows Dr. Banmohan Singh is the cleanest possible. That we all know but how can the investigation the be fair when all these people are in the government? Let's, 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 now, let's now get a word from the champion of the cause, the crusader as Shivraj Singh pointed out. Dr. Swami, are you happy? with the way the government has dealt with issues like the 2G scam, with the black money issue. Where are we headed? 
when are we going to see the government come clean on issues like this well the government has been dragged to the court uh, you may remember that they when they when i brought proof to the supreme court uh, about uh, the involvement of mr raja and this 2g i had asked for sanction to prosecute uh, mr raja for one and a half years the prime minister sat on my uh, application would neither say yes nor no and finally the supreme court in an unprecedented judgment which is now published in the uh, the 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 journals of the supreme court as subramanian swami versus manmohan singh they actually issued notice to the prime minister and but for the fact that I mean, the prime minister uh, was a, regarded as a person who is himself not taken the money i think the the supreme court would have passed strictures but the supreme court had to direct the uh, uh, prime minister to give me sanction so in every place i have seen they drag drag it drag the prevent it block it and uh, you he says it has to be proved proved by whom i can't prove it if you sit on the files and don't give me the files i can only say prima facie the case is made out hmm. but then when it comes to conviction we need that and we have seen in the case of the 2g uh, trial that the government lawyer for the cbi was colluding with the accused hmm. and he had he was caught by a, a uh, whistle blower who uh, t- quietly taped the conversations so i, I think it be entirely wrong to say the congress has cooperated in this it has been very reluctant on the question of foreign money uh, shivraj is absolutely right the the government uh, was most reluctant to get the information the germans got the entire list from the lichtenstein people we refused to take it then the supreme court had to come and direct them to get it and even today the list of names have not been uh, made public although it is there with the government mr jogi what seems to be yeah. the problem why are we so reluctant we have everything in front of us but nothing seems to be coming out in the open we don't seem to be seeing any progress on any of these fronts what really is the problem no you are at, um, i i i think uh, they are wrong on facts we are ready to uh, make uh, the names public uh, but the case is in the court the court of law has said that you you don't declare you don't publicize these names no. that's why the court no, has not said anything like that i don't think so no. Uh, eminent law, lawyer is here he'll be uh, the most suited person has the court said that or no 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 in fact uh, they there is a government which is quoting all kinds of uh, 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 agreements like double taxation, double taxation double taxation i i i admire him for his process but but he know very well if the court had agreed the names would be there before the public the next day what has nothing to say on this <laughs> no, okay for let, let, let's let's put that issue aside mr jogi let's talk about a raja now a raja has very clearly come and said that i want to depose before the jpc why aren't you letting him depose before the jpc whom are you trying to protect what are you trying to hide that is for the jpc to decide as to who they want so there's a congress to majority to them and who do yeah. they do not want that to depose the before them All these JPCs, JPCs and all the investigating agencies of are controlled by the Congress party. Political parties, and not about uh, and, and it is for them to decide. Mr. Shetikar, what really seems to be the problem? Are we ever going to see the truth as far as the 2G case is concerned, or the black money, or is it just going to continue like this all all throughout our lifetime? No, let us not talk about the I mean much serious uh, issues like 2G and all. I mean definitely it is a major a uh, scam center. even the sensitive issues like inflation hmm. which i am sure that any government should be worried about that and, and its political implication now here also the government sitting is sitting over with the food stock of more than 60 6 million tons this is much beyond the storage capacity of 20 million tons and supreme court asked the government to distribute the surplus food to the poorer people didn't do it and had they released to the market the prices would have automatically come down but instead they have exported at much lower price that again leading to the scam of more than 1 lakh crores as it has been pointed out by cag so why talk about the serious issue then I mean, here i mean the any government should be worried about political sensitivity of the issue but there they are not being. and there are so many issues like environmental clearances 88 
infrastructural projects are pending before the minister for the clearances. Out of it, 37 projects are the power projects. When you are facing the problem, power shortage, minister is sitting over the file, 37 power project worth 1,90,000 crores. And this has been mine. This, this has been cleared this by be expert, expert appraisal, expert appraisal committee. Forest. And there is a all clear cut, then all there is a clear cut guidance. In hey, Mr. Jodhi, please listen. There is a clear cut guidance that Minister has got only 45 days to clear the to survive. You, you but she is sitting over the fire. Mr. Jogi, Mr. Jogi, from there. You, you, you had your chance to speak. From there. You want to bring your iron ore from there. Mr. Shettigar has been listening to you very patiently for the last 15 minutes. Let him speak for a couple of minutes and then you'll get your chance to rebut. Yes, Mr. Shittigar, no, complete. As per the environmental laws, total three within 210 days, the government is supposed to clear it. As far as the minister is concerned, it has been clearly defined. Minister has to clear within 45 we days. Talking, 40, 45 I'm days. Say, but but the even, the even let, alone the, let alone the this private the projects, the even the Coal we India, Coal India project, 60 we are not Coal India bothered about are the tiles. You are not bothered and about the, the forest. 33% of our land mass must be under forest. You want to cut down all the trees? No, no. no. You, you want to destroy all the forest? No. You want to but destroy you all see, your tribal? But, but once the expert appraisal committee has given its report after environmental impact assessment is done and the public hearing has been conducted, then only expert appraisal committee gives its opinion. You, you know how the public days. hearings are being conducted? I, I know the procedure. Yeah, I that that is why I am area. I am a tribal. I know it for, for sure. How how do you do it? No, there are. It has been clearly defined. There are six steps, and the sixth step is with the minister. This is what with this is what the, the corporation of want, and this is what we want to do. No, this is not what I do. That is what the a, This is a norm decided by the government. You don't follow, follow your own norms. She said, I'll not let it happen. Okay, let's, let's bring Professor. Ram Ramesh put his foot down. But Mr. Jogi, said, I, I want to say happen. one thing here. Very if quickly. the tribals feel that you are the actual well-wishers of the tribals, then I, I disagree with you because most of the tribal dominated seats are won by the BJP and most of the tribal dominated states are ruled by the BJP. They do not, I do not think the tribals of this country have faith in Congress party, including your own state, Chhattisgarh. The second, uh, this is the ah, second term for Mr. Raman Singh. The, we have, uh, uh, you, you have very correctly cited the example of my state. Yeah. You look at the 2003 election, you look at the 2008 election. We have lost only in this belt where Naxalites are there, where nobody goes to vote, where there is... 75% voting and the uh, entire voting uh, process is rigged why don't you, BJP why don't you bring Dr. some policy the, why don't you and bring some policy you have the government at the center if we win 12 seats we can't go okay. and campaign sir there is we, a government at the center of congress party election. why don't you bring an effective policy we, we seem to be going to solve the problem of naxalism because naxalism was not there when, when our country became independent naxalism uh, as a uh, problem is a gift of congress Shivrat party Singh. to this country Shivrat Singh, we seem to be we seem to be deviating from the naxalism core, core issue was here point to the boundaries of chhattisgarh I, when congress was ruling when i was the chief minister it was confined yeah. to our borders today Two third of Chhattisgarh is under the influence of Naxalites. Okay, we seem to be de de deviating from the core issue here, Professor Malav, uh, Madhav Nalapath. Of course, let's come back to the core issue of the debate. Let me ask you a question now. It certainly seems like a time for uh, for unlikely alliances. You have seen the JDU, in fact, try and come closer to the Congress. You are seeing now the Samajwadi Party, of course, trying and going closer, uh, trying to go closer to the BJP, and then talking about the Third Front as well. It certainly seems like a time for free for all. Well, it's, uh, you know, this uh, points to one very, very important factor which we haven't touched upon. And that is the reality that the national parties, unfortunately, have seemed to be at the top rung, run by people who spend far too much time in Delhi. You know, they have a very, they stay in Delhi, it's their home city, and they, they when they go to the districts at all, it's for 24 hours or 48 hours and they come back and they have very little exposure 
to what is happening in the real India. I mean, when people from other parts of the country come to Delhi, they are sometimes, uh, they, they wonder whether the British have left and uh, India was a British colony. Now, in a sense, you know, we have become almost a colony of some entity called Delhi, which is now trying to extend its tentacles throughout the country and which is frankly slowing down progress. Mr. Jogi was talking about the tribal population. I, I know he has uh, certainly moved a very far distance. But the kind of policies that he seems to be favoring are policies that will keep our tribal brothers and sisters exactly where they were for the last 4,000 years. The tribals in India, the non-tribals, they all want to move on. For that you need power, you need growth, you need development. And this is the kind of very relevant kind of philosophy which unfortunately was adopted by India in the 1950s in the Northeast. Just leave them alone. No modernization should come there. No roads, no power, no waters, no modern water. So they remain exactly as they have been for 2000 years. That is a completely ridiculous kind of policy. The whole country has a right to be socially progressive and that means uh, the, the fruits of development. And I agree totally with Jagdish. It's unconscionable that a ministry should block progress in this manner. In my view, the environment ministry is costing this country at least 2% of economic growth a year. <laughs> well, why that, don't that. we behave like America then? The Americans went there and killed all the Red Indians. And now they, have, and they are enjoying all the resources. Here also we are only about 10% tribals. You kill all of us and then you enjoy all the resources. Without bothering for our lives. Okay, okay. That, that, that's that's, our that's definitely not going to happen. Mr. Jogi, I'm going to let you. Without bothering for our health. Uh, a very, very unfair allegation. Okay, that's an unfair allegation. Let's leave it at that and now talk about something else, of course. Mr. Ramachandran, another problem really is our regional parties do not know where they are heading really now let's look at the dmk dmk today came out and gave a statement and said that you know they do not want the government to fall uh, and this just days after they pulled out of the upa government you have the dmk now coming and saying that they do not want the government to fall and they are weary about the congress government failing at the center listen you know i do believe that this government is not going to fall in the immediate future hmm. whatever we might say there are a couple of parties waiting on the sidelines, supporting them from outside, who will definitely come to their aid. Or if they don't come, there's going to, there are going to be somebody else who will probably try and fit the bill of the numbers. Even TMC's Mamtadi has, you know, offered our help in, yes. in time yes. of a crisis. Yeah. So therefore, and let's not forget, I don't think there's one MP in this house in in Lok Sabha who wants early general elections. You know. There are other factors which have come into play. Now, for example, if Samajwadi party pulls down the government as early as possible and the government who is left is no option, they can easily do it, you know. After all, the finance bill is going to come up for passing. Hmm. I mean, any money bill if it fails on the floor of the house, the government has to go. There is no question that the government will say, you know, I will remain for another one year till the elections are due. So, you, you are there as a caretaker government till the elections are over. So, it's not as simple as everybody is talking about this, that, you know, third front is very much a reality. I don't think the third front has the capacity to knit together and get 272 seats, the simple majority required on the floor of the Lok Sabha. Having said that, I think you have to revolve around these two major political formations headed by the Congress on the one side and the BJP on the other. Hmm. Do you have any other viable alternative? It was tried by Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu at one point of time. It was also tried to a great extent by Mr. P. V. Narasimha Rao. I don't want to go into details about how he tried it. Mm. But it was tried and it didn't work out. So it's not all that simple. You know, people say that you need the majority vote in this country to win election. I have met a lot of people on this and I am also convinced that the majority vote alone cannot uh, get you the numbers to form a government on your own. Hmm. If you don't get the minority vote or if you don't get the backwards vote, you can forget about ruling this country. And we are talking about Prime Ministers. Is it so simple that Narendra Modi's name is announced tomorrow by the BJP leadership and Narendra Modi sweeps the entire polls? Is it possible? 
Let them name Narendra Modi. Is that, today. Okay. Is that possible? That's something that we'll have to ask Mr. Please Shetikar. Ask Mr. Shetikar. Is that Shetikar. possible, Mr. Shetikar? Is that what the BJP is really banking on? That tomorrow or in November will come out and name Narendra Modi as a prime ministerial candidate and there's going to be a major sweep across the country and everybody is going to go the way of the BJP. No, I'm not in a position to say whom the BJP will project as oh, a prime oh, minister. Don't, don't, don't name the person, but no. do you believe that that's, some, that's something that's going to happen? Uh, that a single person can change the, uh, the fortunes of an entire party? No, it is uh, for any political party. Uh, definitely leader plays a crucial role, especially energizing the cadre. Now, as far as energizing the cadre is concerned, there is no doubt that uh, compared to the rest of the uh, leaders, definitely Narendra Modi has got the capacity to energize the BJP cadres. Now, as far as the strategy of the party is concerned, the party leadership has to decide whom to project because there are other factors also. Energizing the cadre is definitely crucial, but that alone is not sufficient. There are so many other factors or the limitations, rather limitations are there. Taking all these factors, party may decide at an appropriate time and that again party may decide whether to project somebody before the election that also the and it depends on the strategy we have to do. See that is the factual position. Hmm. So if everyone is going to say well he is going to be the candidate, I don't think senior leaders like him in the party will instantly come out and say no he is the leader and he should be there. Even the party president after talking about <laughs> Modi for a few days has currently gone quiet. Hmm. Because if they do anything like that now, they will get into a into an absolute mess. We're getting to an absolute mess. Professor Nalapath, of course, it certainly looks like it's going to be Narendra Modi versus Rahul Gandhi, at least by the way things stand right now. It seems like that's the, that's the way things are headed. Is that going to be the downfall of both the Congress and the BJP projecting Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi? That's a silly thing. Well, in my personal opinion, both the Congress and the BJP will actually benefit significantly if Narendra Modi and Rahul Gandhi are put forward as the leaders of either formation. In the case of Narendra Modi, there, is, there has been a, a controversy and quite a, an unavoidable one relating to 2002. But his, there is, on the other hand, his record in Gujarat, his record of performance and the fact that he is certainly building up a constituency in large sections of the people. And let's not forget, although he never mentions his own community, Narendra Modi also c comes from, the, uh, from a, a, a backward community. So there is a very, very strong vote bank that could uh, find itself identified with him. Rahul Gandhi is young. He comes from a very distinguished lineage. And he has, uh, I mean, uh, made some very, very good moves in terms of wanting some modern policies. So very definitely, I think, that kind of a clear-cut situation would be advantageous to Congress and BJP. What is not advantageous to them is the current confusion. I mean, it's very obvious Manmohan Singh is on his way out. So what is a replacement? Rahul Gandhi says he doesn't want to come. There's a question mark. In the case of BJP, many leaders, especially those who are in Delhi, do not want Modi. There's a question mark. Frankly, removing that question mark will help both the Congress as well as the BJP. Well, removing that question mark is going to help both the Congress and the BJP is what Professor Nalapath is saying, uh, Dr. Swami. What yes. do you think? What do you believe? I think he has uh, very uh, succinctly put, put the matter. See, the question is, uh, we are, after J July, the whole uh, uh, juggernaut will move, as they say. Mm -hmm. Because you've got five uh, assembly uh, elections coming in the end of uh, this year. Now, by all accounts, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, nobody can ever be sure of election results in India, but all accounts, Congress is going to get a drubbing in these five states, particularly the big ones, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. Now, if that were so, then uh, I think Congress will be in complete tatters because it's going to, they can't afford to go to elections mm -hmm. after being defeated in five assembly elections. The whole atmosphere will be vitiated for them. But are they going to lose so, in so all the five states? That's well, the uh, because there's a sea of change already in Karnataka. We saw in the lo uh, local no, body no, elections. Karnataka is going now. Yes. I'm talking about uh, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan, Delhi, Delhi 
and uh, one more state. Uh, these states are, not, I think, uh, is it uh, Andhra? Uh, Andhra in 2014. Yeah, 14. No. Uh, now, these are states where uh, there is no hope for the Congress, according hmm. to observers. I, hmm. you know, and then, as I say, uh, in elections, nobody can be able to be a show. If that is ho now Congress has a problem. Is it going to wait for that kind of a verdict and then go for general elections or have the elections before? And uh, there's another additional question. Do, do you want every day to be taunted by Mulayam Singh and uh, Mayavati? Hmm. Because they are not very, they have never been pro-Congress. Uh, I know Mulayam Singh for a long, long time. And I can tell you the one thing that is, uh, this, he's in imbibe from Loya is to have a deep distrust of the Congress party. So he will continue to maintain for his image sake attacks on the, and so Congress will look like a lame duck from uh, day one uh, after this parliament session. Mm. So uh, I think uh, uh, what Nalapath said is absolutely right. The BJP if it wants to, or the NDA wants to, uh, take advantage of this decline in Congress popularity, it must project a clear cut leader. Okay. And Modi is certainly that. I am not uh, advising BJP who they should put up, but I am saying that he is one who is very clear cut. Now, if you ask me, is there anybody else? Well, I can't think just now. Uh, now, in the case of Rahul Gandhi, well, Marapath has a higher opinion of him than I do. Hmm. Uh, and I think that the, if, if there is a contest between uh, Rahul Gandhi and <coughs> Modi, I think uh, India may get absolute majority. Okay, okay. And we're completely running out of time on the show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everyone th 20 seconds, of course, for your final comments, starting with you, Shivrat Singh. 20 seconds, your closing comments. Uh, you started uh, this show with the question of uh, a third front. As far as I think, there is no question of third front, third front government in near future, as I said, who will be the first among the equals. Everybody wants to be himself first among the equals and nobody okay. wants any other person to be first among the equals. Okay. Mr. Shatigar, 20 seconds please. Uh, in the prevailing uh, situation, whether it's atrocities on women or the lack of governance or the problems you are facing from the security angle, the country needs a strong leader. Okay, the so, country needs a strong leader. We'll leave it at that. Mr. Ramachandran. Well, the Cong Congress has tied itself in knots. It's facing a very, very gloomy situation. How it extracts, it extracts itself from this uh, situation, one has to see. But that doesn't mean that those opposed to the Congress party or those who are even supporting it from outside are in a position to knit together a grouping Okay. Which will get the requisite arithmetic. Okay, okay. We're talking about numbers there. And uh, Mr. Jogi, in 20 seconds, your closing comments, please. Uh, you, I would say that third front is not going to materialize. Just what the people used to talk about UPA 1, uh, they're talking about UPA 2, and they will, they will be surprised and pleasantly surprised when they see a UPA 3 also in 2014. That will, that will said, be the doomsday for said, the nation. Said, 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 like an, <laughs> said, said like a politician that I'm going to let uh, uh, Mr. Na Professor Nalapat to have the final word. Professor Nalapat in 20 seconds. Well, the good news is that the Indian voter has finally ceased to be all forgiving uh, of, of, the, of the politician. You know, the voter has several times voted his caste, voted his community, irrespective of performance. Today, politicians are feeling more insecure because the voter is more secure about demanding his rights. And I think that's very good news. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being a part of the NewsX debate at 9 tonight. It was indeed a splendid show. Thank you so much for watching as well. Good night. <laughs>